Welcome to the Vacation Rental Success Podcast. This episode is brought to you by Hostfully. Hostfully is a property management and guest experience software for short-term rentals that helps management companies, large and small, scale their vacation rental businesses. With features designed to help manage and grow property management operations, this could be the solution for you. Use the promo code VRF100 to save $100. Let's get started. Here's your host, Heather Bayer. Today, I am talking to Catherine Ratcliffe from Lost Together Stays. She was one of the recipients of the Destination Air Awards that were made at the Book Direct Show in Miami back in October. And Catherine and her company demonstrate everything that a Destination Air is all about. And she's going to be sharing that all with you. This is the Vacation Rental Success Podcast, keeping you up to date with news, views, information and resources on this rapidly changing short-term rental business. I'm your host, Heather Bayer, and with 25 years of experience in this industry, I'm making sure you know what's hot, what's not, what's new and what will help make your business a success. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of the Vacation Rental Success Podcast. This is your host, Heather Bayer, and as ever, I am super delighted to be back with you once again from the sunny shores of Gulf Coast in Alabama. And today, I am super delighted to have with me one of the recipients of the Destination Air Awards. Now, I spoke to the founder of the Destination Air Awards, Will Slickers, a few episodes back, and I'll put a link to that episode in the show notes because I think you'll you'll want to check it out. But the award features those who are truly wired to create remarkable experiences. That comes straight from the Slick Talk podcast site, talking about what a Destination Air actually is. It shows a high standard of commitment to the guest experience, a team culture, the foundation of a strong community and proper representation of hospitality as a whole. Now, over the next few months, I'm hoping to interview all of the recipients of the awards this season. And the first one is Catherine Ratcliffe. Her company, Lost Together Stays, is a brilliant example of what a destination air is. So without further ado, let's move straight on over to my interview with Catherine. And don't forget, we'll be pausing halfway to pose another question to David Jacoby from Hostfully, our sponsor. So hang out for that one as well. So I'm super happy to have with me today, Catherine Ratcliffe from Lost Together Stays. And as I mentioned in the introduction, Catherine was the recipient of a Destination Air Award that was presented at the Book Direct Show in Miami back in October by the founder of the Destination Air Award, Will Slickers. Did that come as a surprise, Catherine? A complete surprise. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. No idea. I, I yes, I was I was sitting there and I, I I think I knew that you were a winner and I saw your face and it was clear that uh, yeah nobody had spilled the beans before the event happened. So we're going to go in and talk about you know how you felt about winning the award. But firstly, I wanted to thank you so much for for joining me today and talking about what it is, you know, what's in your DNA and the company's DNA that brought you to this spot where you've been given one of the industry's really prestigious awards. So yeah, thank you for thank you for being here and we will kick off. I'm going to ask you to tell tell us a little bit about yourself and where you live and where your properties are. Well, thank you so much Heather. I, I appreciate it. So I am originally from Canada, Ottawa, Canada, and I moved here to the Tampa Bay area in 1998. And I moved in a a very, probably not most uh, parentally friendly way. I packed my, I was a dual citizen, so I packed my futon, my dog, and my milk jug. (laughs) Because I did not expect, uh, I thought I knew everything there was to being 
an American. And I, I always talk about this when I do presentations because I think it's important to the fabric of the lesson I learned at a very young age, which was that you think you know everything and it's the small things that you miss. So I packed my milk jug and <laughs> I moved to Tampa and realized only in Ontario does milk come in bags. <laughs> And so, I knew that's where you were. I knew that's where you were going with that because I thought, why are you taking a Canadian milk jug or an Ontario milk jug to uh, yeah. to to somewhere where milk comes in cartons? It doesn't come in plastic bags. Right. <laughs> it does not. So that milk jug has been used to water Christmas trees, to bathe my children, <laughs> and has been part of every training session or presentation that I have ever done because it's it's really the foundation of not missing the small things. So that's part of what I've what I've tried to do. And so, you know, I've been a, a working mom. I am in a large group employee benefits firm. So it's it's fast and furious, mom on fire. My family was obviously in Canada. My husband's family, just before we got married, his mother was diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's. And so we didn't have a lot of ability for some family support. So it was <laughs> literally on fire. And he traveled, I traveled. And so our vacations were the moment that we could try to make it all look like a Norman Rockwell imagery (laughs) for our children and everybody else that was around. And, you know, you put so much thought and planning and money and importance on those events. And it would be those small things that would fall down, Mm -hmm. you know, whether it was, you know, I I didn't know where the property manager's office was. And you just, I don't know, for me, I just always wanted to get it right and to not feel like I didn't have it together for my kids. Because for the other 51 weeks of the year, it was just, you know, all kinds of craziness. And so I was, you know, a guest for a long, long time first. And then. My mother died in 2017 after a long illness that kept her in an inpatient facility for a long time. And she never got the retirement that she wanted. And Mm. I sort of had this complete midlife crisis uh, saying, who says you get a retirement? Because my mother-in-law had died at 62 of ALS. And and I really embraced this in the moment kind of mentality. And I was desperate for pictures and stories and memories. And I was tracking down all my mom's coworkers that were retired and vacationing in Florida. And then I transitioned to what was the memory? What were the stories going to be for my children? Because I had been living this life on fire as this amazing professional, but not always (sighs) the best mom. (laughs) Like there is, there were these things where I just I, I failed at, you know, I, I, I kept some silly things. The daycare sent me a note one time with my youngest daughter because she'd gone to school with two left shoes. You just do the best you can and you hope for the best. It brings to mind that image of the, of the, the swan, you know, sailing serenely across the water and you don't see the mad yes. panic that's going on underneath. <laughs> Absolutely. So I really started thinking about, well, what was this legacy going to be? Because so much of who I was for 51 weeks of the year was defined by my career. And I'm not sure that there was going to be anything tangible from a large group employee benefits firm that was going to be there for my children to kind of hold on to. So I said to my husband one day, I said, I'm going to buy a condo on the beach. And he thought I was just crazy. Like, okay, sure, go do that. And it was just you know, it it was a very silly reaction. And he didn't come with me. My middle daughter came with me and we went and I lined up viewings and i had worked it all out. And I came home and he said, how did it go? And I said, good. I put an offer in. And he said, what? And (laughs) I said, yeah, I said, it's, it's going to be great. And so he just was completely baffled. And I showed him how I had worked it out. And it was already a rental property. So I had the metrics, I knew that, you know, what they had done previously, and I had seen it, and I knew what I would do slightly differently, with no experience, mind you, other than being a guest. And so it went through and and it was, it was a lot of, a lot of harried moments in the process going through it, but we did it. And then it was managed by a property manager. And I am a person that always asks questions. I'm very process oriented. And so that can be a good thing or a bad thing. And so the property manager fired me <laughs> because she said, I asked too many questions. And I just I just wanted to understand. And that's just, that's who I am. So I was frantic because I was at a conference in Orlando. And I thought, oh my God, how am I going to tell my husband that not only did I put us in this situation with this condo, but now we just got fired by a property manager for my questions. So we found another property manager 
And it was also not a great experience because they didn't get us any bookings. And so here we were, we were financially, I mean, took a complete chance on this condo and they didn't get us any bookings. So I frantically went on Verbo and put my listing up and it started booking. And I had help with a friend in doing that. And so then they fired me because they said their model didn't support me getting all the bookings. <laughs> I was like, well, it wasn't my intention to do this, but here we are. I had to cover the mortgage. <laughs> so, And so I started just doing it on my own. And I realized that my first piece was really identifying a cleaner and making sure that I had a very close relationship with that cleaner. The cleaner needed to be respected, needed to have realistic parameters of what they needed to do, what timeframes they had to be able to get that done in, and the compensation had to be fair. And so I believe that I pay my cleaners probably better than, than most people. And because I rely on them so much. You know, my condo is only an hour from my house. But again, I was working this full-time job. I travel all over the country. My husband traveled. I have three children. I have, you know, a dog, all these kind of things. I couldn't just run over. So our first thing that came up was a plumbing issue. And I was at work prepping for a big client meeting and I couldn't run over to the condo and deal with the plumbing issue. And I had to triage that. And uh, I realized it didn't really matter if I was 15 minutes from the property, mm-hmm. or, you know, nine hours, I had to have a system. And so that's, that's really what I, what I worked through. There's a couple of things I want to just go back on here. One is your story is remarkably similar to mine. My yeah. mother died at 65 from MS. And, and mm-hmm. I went through exactly the same, you know, looking for, you know, what am I going to give my children for that for those memories. And then, you know, buying that first property and having absolutely no clue what to do. And, and you just, yeah, you, you, you do your absolute best. And then, yeah, we, we had our share of plumbing issues as well. And so, so, so yes, I'm, I very much relate to, to what you're talking about. And then that point about cleaners, and mm-hmm. having that relationship with a cleaner. I mean, I, I, I don't know about you with, with mine. Carol was my, my first. She started out as a cleaner. We, we changed her name to property manager. So she became property mm-hmm. manager for, for the properties that we owned. Because she almost gained two inches, I think, when, when we said, you're not our cleaner, you're our property manager. And it was like, you know, just changing yeah. that title was a massive Um, made just a massive difference to her. So I'm glad you mentioned that. So often you hear people almost, you know, it's a throwaway line about a cleaner. Oh, I need to get a cleaner. I need to get somebody to come in. Um, You agree with me that that's just not the way to treat that part of the business? No, absolutely not. I mean, I have such a personal relationship with my cleaners. It's very important to me to know them and for them to know me. And so you remember them, you know, for, for other things, whether it's Christmas or whatever it is, you know, you always want to make sure that you share with them any successes and give them every opportunity. Um, you know, we, we really try to, to be part, it, it's very much a relationship. And I think, you know, having been a small business with, cause from a brokerage firm perspective, we were a small business mm-hmm. and I really learned how to create that family environment with all of your team members and making sure that you recognize them in the good times and the difficult times. Because when there, when there is a complaint, when something does go wrong, you have to address it. And sometimes that can be difficult. You know, sometimes I think you, you worry too much about upsetting the cleaner or, you know, giving negative feedback in which, you know, as long as you give it constructively, it's not necessarily negative, but balls get dropped sometimes. And I always use a line from Anne of Green Gables where they say, you know, tomorrow's fresh with no mistakes in it. And what I love about the short term rental experience is that I have a new opportunity every seven days or four days to start over. So we this went this went left. This was not the way we wanted it to go. And so I can regroup with that person and just say, all right, this is what we're going to do differently or, you know, the guest is being unreasonable about this, but we need to be client centric in this and, and kind of show Mm -hmm. up a little bit differently. And, and that's always helped. And I think, you know, when I, even from a business model perspective, I try to protect 
um, my cleaners in those ways too. Like I'll have, have a property in Homosassa, Florida, which is renowned for snowbirds coming down. And I don't have anything over seven days available. And I do that very, very strictly. And a lot of people say, but, but you can be booked if, you know, for three months in the wintertime. And I said, yes, but my cleaner can't get paid. Mm-hmm. And I need to make sure my cleaner gets paid every four to seven days. And that is my primary goal. And I would rather have a lower occupancy and a more reliable and tighter relationship with my cleaner than have a guest that's going to be here for 30 or 60 days. Tell me about your other properties. So you started with the condo. Where did you go from there? So from there, I went to Blue Ridge, Georgia, just outside Blue Ridge in, in Epworth. So the condo during COVID, we went and lived over there Monday through Friday and then went home on the weekends. And it was it was great. At one point, I told my husband, I said, I think we're going to have to rent the the house in Tampa and just live here because this is too amazing. You can't ask me to go back home. <laughs> and then as the world started to come back, it was there was a lot of people. And um, I think beaches in Florida sort of were, were off the rails pretty quickly. And so... At that time, I had also come off a fairly interesting family situation because my brother is a federal politician in Canada and I wanted some privacy. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I I couldn't get any kind of escape from anything. And I thought, well, the mountains is a great place. My husband and I had gone to LJ for our first anniversary. And so I started looking and I went up there and met with a builder and talked to him about what I was looking for. And so we, we started the project there and the design. And again, my husband said, how are you going to manage something nine hours away in Georgia? And you're going to have two properties now. And I'm still working. <laughs> and I said, it's, it's going to be fine. I know it's going to be fine. And so that took a lot of community investment in a different way that, that Madeira did because Madeira is just, a, it's a, it's a beach town. So it's, it's just very different. Blue Ridge to be successful in that community, I had to really change, you know, or expand some of my thought process. So I don't consider any part of this a side hustle, which you'll hear some people say, and I I don't really consider myself an investor. This is my legacy to, to my children. And I really believe in becoming part of the fabric of anything I do. And so with Blue Ridge, I was so vested in the community. I loved going there. I went every month and I would meet with town people and my builder, of course. And he got to the point where if I came to town and I hadn't called him ahead, he would be really <laughs> disappointed to find out I was in town through somebody else. And uh, But I would go up and I would just meet with people and talk to them. And I was involved in all the different social media pages and Interestingly, one of my brother's federal elections was in September and their municipal election was in October. I watched the entire thing and I couldn't say that I had one view or another on on an issue, but I understood the human element of it. And so the mayoral election was was hotly contested. And I went and spoke to the daughter of of the mayor who who lost her position. And I I just wanted to check in and see how her mom was doing from a personal perspective, because I knew what that Mm -hmm. loss kind of felt like. And it meant so much to her that I had even known that that was a thing because they viewed me as an outsider from Tampa. And that kind of changed. Once I started to be invested that way, I wasn't really viewed as an outsider. So I've been able to build a great community of people that I can call when I need help. And, you know, it, it became important to know, you know, their children's names and what they were interested in and all their different things. And I loved it. It was like, just joining a little reality show that I just (sighs) felt so privileged to be part of. I absolutely loved it. So I I think you have to, you know, for for me anyways, I felt like I had an obligation to not disrupt in a negative way what I fell in love with. And so I really researched by following all the different social media pages, like what are the issues? What are the issues that the folks are struggling with and, and why why don't they want people coming here for for different reasons? And sustainability and supply chain in Blue Ridge is very, very important. And so I, you know, spent some time thinking about that. And I went through and made sure that anything that I'm ordering for my guests or anything that my guests would need, whether it was coffee, toilet paper, Tide, whatever it was, 
all of that I would order from Costco and I got a storage unit and I filled it up there so that my guests were not depleting what was on the grocery store shelves Mm -hmm. so that the locals, when they would go shopping, wouldn't have a shortage of any of that. But at the same time, any of the local things that I could provide, like in Blue Ridge specifically, I have the Blue Ridge Olive Oil Company where I leave some balsamic vinegar and olive oil for my guests and that I wanted to really support those small businesses and and add those elements in. So it was just a really neat ex, neat journey. And when I built it, we had a lot of fun with it because I, I wanted a place where my brother's family and I could come together. So I have three children and uh, I had a friend tell me after I had my third child, the world is not built for five people, Catherine. <laughs> and I said, I'm not sure I'm willing to accept that. I think, I think I'm going to try to work on that. <laughs> and so my, my world is really defined by we're, we're a family of five. We don't fit into a nice tidy box and um, we have strong personalities. <laughs> and, you know, going back to your question about the name, that was sort of where it came from, you know, so first of all, the, the song is is a little bit of the inspiration, which is a Blue Rodeo song, Lost Together, and the lyrics of it really ring true with me. And so when I would find myself on vacation with my children, and all of a sudden I'm in that mom moment, it, I, I was a little bit lost on what to do. <laughs> they would say, what's for lunch, and that sort of thing, because I wasn't with them for lunch. Most of them is Saturdays and Sundays, but they were in daycare, and then they were in school, and so, you know, you, you spend your time saying, get off your cell phone and, you know, we're going to have some quality time and that's everything you build up in your mind. And then you get there and you're like, I don't really know how to start this conversation with you. <laughs> I don't know how to spend time. <laughs> I'm not sure. So we have in, the, in all the different properties, we have a flow concept of how do you be together, but also have an opportunity to regroup and to start fresh. And so for me, that might be my own personal timeout. I did not parent that situation in the best way. I did not show up in the way I wanted to in that moment. I need to regroup with a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, whatever, <laughs> and start back again. And so the the flow is is all designed through that. But I also, because my mother and my mother-in-law were in wheelchairs at the end of their lives, I'm always very cognizant of my own mortality. So the builder was dying laughing with me at a couple of points where he just couldn't understand. So that there's a main level room with an ensuite and there's a loft with an ensuite upstairs. And so his concept was everybody builds the loft as to be this big, beautiful, luxurious room. And I was trying to do the equal on the main level. And he, he asked me, he said, I don't understand. And I said, well, this is my geriatric unit. So <laughs> this is all well and good upstairs. Well, I can make it up the stairs, but after that, this is it. So he laughed, but it, there was a lot of thought that went into some of those things. And then we expanded in March to Homosassa, Florida, which is sort of Wikiwachi, Crystal River area. It's old Florida fishing town. It's renowned for manatees and scalloping. And my brother-in-law has a place up there. And it was, it, it's silly because we both live in Tampa, but it takes us an hour to get to each other. So we never see each other in Tampa. <laughs> we see each other in Homosassa because we're a mile away. But it was, again, bringing that I felt this sense my oldest daughter was a going into her junior year and my middle daughter is fast tracking through college while in high school and I just felt like they, they were slipping away and I needed to create these tangible memories and they've all put sweat equity into each property. They've been there to plan it out and everything, but I wanted more. So with Home Assassin, you know, it's been really special to watch my brother-in-law teach them how to drive a boat and how to fish and how to do all of these different things that just those memories that they'll never mm-hmm. lose and they'll always be able to go there and say, this is what I got to do. I think you've really been hitting the core of why you got this uh, this award. You know, going back to what Will says on his site, team culture, because I think you're, it sounds like your team is, is not just your cleaners and your plumbers, but it's the family yeah. as well. Um, you're building the mm-hmm. family in. And I love the story of, of what you're doing in Blue Ridge and becoming part yeah. of the community. This is, this is clearly not a rinse and repeat exercise yeah. for you when you buy a property. And I, and I didn't take note of what you said about, you know, this is not a, a side hustle. And I, and I feel sometimes that there is, you know, so much out there that says, you know, start this Airbnb and make loads of money and sit back and just watch it come in. And so it's so refreshing to hear 
you talk about your commitment to getting involved in the community because we hear so much about communities struggling with short-term rentals and it's people like you that are going to turn the tide, I think, the other way. If we can get more of you, we need to start cloning you. <laughs> Uh, I, I try. I just, I love it. I love the uniqueness of each environment. I mean, so I, I always tell people I'm a reluctant runner. When people ask for my bio, that's always something that's in there. <laughs> and people say, what do you mean by reluctant runner? And I say, well, my mother-in-law and my mother were in wheelchairs and I feel a responsibility to myself, to them and to my children to use my legs while I can. So there's a gentleman here in Tampa called uh, Matthew Cole, and he does some 5Ks up in Blue Ridge. And I brought a girlfriend of mine up there and I said, let's do a five. And we do a lot of 5Ks here. We do the Skyway Bridge and all that kind of stuff. It's just a fun thing we do. And I said, let's go to Blue Ridge and do a 5K. And she was thoroughly entangled. She's never been there. And we had such a great time. And it brought, you know, attention from, you know, somebody who had never gone there before to do it. And, you know, it, it's really supporting some of those local mm -hmm. businesses. And we had a lot of fun. But the unique thing about doing that, and I've heard you say this and, and many, many people on your show and, and on some of the others is to be your guest. And so when I go, I go with a particular mindset, but by bringing some of my friends to mm -hmm. go along, we can see it in a different light. So you know, I'm going usually with my, my family and I'm not looking to get rowdy or anything like that. But when I went with my girlfriend, she, uh, she said, let's do Bloody Marys in the morning. And I said, oh, it sounds like a great idea. And then I realized Fannin County does not sell alcohol, <laughs> like it, like liquor. <laughs> so you can buy wine and you can buy beer, but you can't buy liquor. <laughs> so by going with somebody else, I got a slightly different lens because that would be something that was very important mm -hmm. for somebody else that was coming along to know those types of things. So I've tried to, with each property, bring different people to the area and have them go through the experiences with me slightly differently um, so that I can learn and I can be a better host. Uh, I want to come back in a few moments to talk about your target market because you're, you're beginning to touch on that. But I just want to uh, take a break from the interview and go across to the president and co-founder of Hostfully, who's our sponsor. So David's answering one of those common questions we hear from property managers when they consider switching to a new property management system or are starting up for the first time. David Jacoby from Hostfully. David, some people consider you both a property management software and a channel manager. Tell us about your channel integration. Yes, you bet. Having direct channel integrations with the popular OTAs, the pop popular channels is really important uh, for a strong property management software. And that's been our focus from day one. So we are very proud to be the only property management software in the United States that is preferred partner status for Airbnb, Verbo and Booking.com. So that is them saying that our integrations are in the elite category, not us saying that. In addition to that, we were one of the first property management softwares to integrate with Marriott Homes and Villas. So we have direct integration with them. And pretty soon, uh, maybe by the time this is live, we'll be live with Google as well. So having those big channels and direct integrations is, is really important. And in addition to that, we have integrations with lots of other niche channels like Go Lightly. We were the first that they integrated with. They came my way, uh, Wednesday, Home Ads. Uh, so we're constantly adding lots of other niche channels, find rentals uh, to help with your distribution. And in addition to that, having a awesome direct booking website. We have many ways of helping you with that. So we have a out of the box booking website that's just a couple clicks and you're live. And we have integrations with some of the best website builders in the industry like Hudson Creative Studio and Boostly and ICND and a few others. Terrific. Thank you. Thank you, David Jacoby. So back with Catherine Ratcliffe and we're talking about your target market now, Catherine. You know, you've got the three very different places. Do they attract very different groups of people? Yes and no. They're different areas. So some people desperately want the beach and other people don't like the beach. They don't like the sand and they want to go to the mountains. But the fundamentals of the guest profile are the same. So 
I think I'm my target guest. So I'm looking for groups of people that don't fit in that tight, tiny box. And so it, it tends to be designed for people that are, you know, whether it's a, a group of friends or siblings or, you know, a family like mine, where you're really trying to to put together this this great vacation and you need your own space. Um, and so nothing is a two bedroom. For me, everything that I do is a three bedroom and up because I'm looking for, again, that that family of five that feels like there's there's no comfortable place for them to go or or greater. My my brother has five children. So <laughs> when you're trying to corral seven people or if we're together and we're 12, um, you know, what does that look like? How does that feel? And so going through that process of that get, uh, guest identification, it's certainly not somebody who's looking for the lowest cost place to go. I'm never, never going to be that, but I think I'm going to provide a great experience. And, um, and so I'm looking for a guest that is truly looking for an experience, not just a place to lay down at night. And so the properties are very unique and very personal. So, you know, I didn't want anything that had pictures or anything like that, not personal in that regard, but personal in that there was a story behind the things within the property and the layout. And I share that story with my guests. And I think it helps the guests to understand that this is is an experience. And I feel like when they when, when you meet them at that point, they respect your your place a little bit better and they choose you for you. They choose you for what you provide in that experience. So it is somebody who often is, is again, very much that demographic of working parents or mm-hmm. multi-generational trying to come together and not always perfect. And so that's where from communication to the layout, I try to set expectations and anticipate needs. So as I walk through the property, and my, my middle daughter can tell you, when we built the cabin in Georgia, it was five hours with the electrician where we were walking through the property and we were opening pretend doors and thinking about where where will a guest think that the light should be and what's going to make the most sense. I really spend a lot of time to make sure that, you know, like me, that mom that has hung all her hopes on this one week vacation and reconnecting with their kids or their spouse or getting along with their in-laws or whatever it is that they're doing that you don't fall down on the small things of the grocery store closes at six on Sundays and you arrived at seven, (laughs) you know, so those types of things. So yeah, the guest that's that's doing the best they can. <laughs> yeah, I, I I very much relate to that. I remember going to the Bahamas once, and uh, the flight was delayed, and and we had absolutely nothing with us, and and had no idea that the store closed at at, at six on the town in the way through, and we dawdled and missed it, mm-hmm. and yeah, so Good. so no cold beer or wine on that first night, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I love that. I just want to go back to something you said about um, story behind things in the property. Can you give me some examples? Sure. So I had a lot of fun building out the Blue Ridge property, and I felt a very strong connection to all of my family as I was building it. And so I was very close to my mother-in-law. I was one of a very, very lucky group of people that adored their mother-in-laws. And um, so I I have a few tributes into there of her favorite things. And so there's a Jack Daniels barrel in there. She loved Jack Daniels. And uh, we used to say her two best friends were Jack and Ginger. And uh, so there's a (laughs) Jack Daniels barrel. I reached out to a local person who would build it for me. And I, I like to talk to each of the partners that I work with. So I was talking to him. And I couldn't believe when he said that his father-in-law had just been diagnosed with ALS. And I just, I was like, this is meant to be. So I was just amazed. And so we've stayed in in touch and talked a little bit about what that feels like to be the son-in-law, daughter-in-law of that situation and all that kind of thing. And so there's a, there's a table there that I feel a very strong connection to. My, my grandfather worked for Massey Harris, which then became Massey Ferguson in, um, in Toronto. So I was looking for a 1960s tractor that I would be able to chop down into a tractor bar. 
So I found this man in Georgia that had one for sale and I contacted him and we we're talking and, you know, we have this honest moment as I'm asking questions about the tractor, is it the original paint and all that kind of thing. And he says to me, he says, ma'am, I, I feel like I need to be honest with you. He said, uh, it leaks oil. <laughs> I said, well, I feel like I need to be honest with you too. It's about to be a bar. <laughs> so it was just a really funny moment because he didn't want to, you know, swindle me and sell me a lemon tractor. <laughs> and I had no intention of farming it. <laughs> But it's a beautiful tractor, and I found a local craftsman. He's an older gentleman, and he he made it all for me and put a motorcycle battery on it, and it's got headlights and everything. So there's a lot of fun things like that that are very personal. And so those stories are are in my guidebooks for my guests to read, and I think that's where they get excited about it. And there's it's, it's a very personal experience as opposed to, here's your cookie cutter property, and this is what it is. Uh, I love that you do that in, in you use touch day for, for your guides. And, yes. and I love that um, you, you put those stories in there. I mean, I've been through one of the guides, I've looked at it and, and I got really absorbed in that. And that's, that's, that what, that's what makes these guides just really stand out because you can, you can imbue them with your personality and with the stories behind the property. I really love that. I just want to touch a, a little on your website on lost, losttogetherstays.com and I'll put a link to that in the show notes and encourage everybody to go have a look at, you know, there's a few parts of this website that I really love. You have a great about us page. I am focused, so focused on having a personal about us page and I love, you know, I love to see yours. Your photographs are outstanding, professionally done. Are they, or or do you do them yourself? Yes. Oh yes. Yeah. No, no. They're they're all professionally done by local photographers. Yeah, and uh, and they they just stand out so much. And yeah, tell me about um, a direct booking. How is that working for you? It's going well. I you know I, I appreciated a lot of the necessity for it through COVID and through some of the platform changes that that were there. I was only ever on Verbo and I use Stafi as well to capture the guest's email and then market to them afterwards. I think it's, you know, for me, it's, it's A, it's about control of the guest experience and getting the right guests in my units because I, that's important to me because they are so personal. Um, but also I wanted to own my reviews. Mm-hmm. So going back to the beginning, I wanted this as a legacy piece for my children. When I'm gone, all those reviews are on my website. No one can ever take them down and they can read all the very personal reviews and those will be the stories that they'll have. And the reviews are wonderful. I've, I've spent some time and I think everybody should do this, you know, go through Catherine's reviews on the Lost Together Stays website because it's the reviews that often tell you isn't it? What, you know, what a host is doing well, but they also tell you what, the, what guests want and, and how you're meeting those needs. So I learned a lot from, from your reviews, still always still learning. So uh, as I say, I encourage everybody to go and, and take a look at those. So Catherine, what, what would you say are the biggest challenges you have faced over the course of building you know, building up these three properties and and making them so successful? So I think the first thing is getting your tech stack right. You know, it's it's really, really important to make sure that you don't over layer and that you have the appropriate layering of that technology so that you can focus on the things that really make you great at what you do. And setting door codes is not what makes you great at what you do. So really, you know, focusing on in on that. And then staying true to who you are, because sometimes, and I've experienced this in in my professional career as well as this, sometimes people come along with a a lot of ideas about what you should do and how you should do it and how they know better. And so you need to stay true to that, but also always be willing to grow and learn and be open. I read other people's reviews too. And so sometimes it really strikes me that, man, all I, and I did this with the beach condo, all I need to do is make sure that there's a pizza cutter. <laughs> like, wow, I can do that, <laughs> you know? And uh, so be, be learning all the time, but also don't lose yourself in it. You know, mm-hmm. don't just because somebody says you should be pet friendly doesn't mean you need to be pet friendly. That's important too. 
Yeah, exactly. I just wanted to go back onto your tech stack. You'd, you'd mentioned, touch, or I'd mentioned touch day. Uh, Stayfy is something else you use. What else would you recommend in terms of your, your own tech stack? So I use Breezeway to manage my cleaners because I am in three different areas and three different sets of cleaners and different things that need to be done. You know, in Blue Ridge, it's totally different than what needs <laughs> to happen at the beach. And that kind of keeps me organized on lawn care or whatever has to be done. And that's very helpful. I use owner res for my property management system. And so that works out my communication flow. I use Avalara for my property tax and I use Price Labs for all my dynamic pricing, which helps me as well because I can kind of see where I'm at and where I want to be with all of that. And those are those are the main ones that I use. Yeah, that, that's great. And I, I loved what you said about don't overlayer because it's it's very difficult not or challenging not to jump on the next mm-hmm. best shiny thing. And then before you know it, yeah. you you are you've just got multiple software platforms that are abutting each other or overlapping each other. So I love that piece of advice. Talking about pieces of advice as we're coming to the end here, what would you, um, if, you know, so, somebody who's listening to this, who is thinking maybe of getting into the business or has one property and thinking about buying another somewhere else, what would you recommend to them that they do? I would say have confidence in yourself, listen to the experts, listen to a lot of podcasts and really don't view it as a profit center, view it as creating an experience because people are entrusting their memories with their loved ones, with their people to you. And so you need to be authentic in what you provide and meet their expectations. And if it's not the right moment to do that, then don't do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. That uh, that is great advice. You know, the, the bit I love the best. You know, don't view it as a profit center. I've been in this business since the nineteen nineties, and th- there was nothing out there to help you do this stuff. Then you just really had to do it from the seat of your pants and just hope for the best. And I learned a huge amount along the way just by listening to guests, just by hearing from them what it what it was they wanted, not what I thought they wanted. And it certainly sounds that, you know, that that's your philosophy as well. So let's just wrap up, just go back to sitting there in that room at the Destination Air Awards in Miami. How did that make you feel? How did you feel when, when they called your name out? I, I mean, absolutely stunned. This was a very secret passion of mine. <laughs> this is, this is what I have you know, done evenings, weekends, and given so much of myself personally to, and I didn't think anybody in the room knew who I was. I I knew who most people in the room were. And I felt, you know, very much like I was celebrity crushing all the way through it. So when they said my name, it was just, I was absolutely shocked and honored. I've tried always to execute on the basics and believe that the good things will will come about by doing that, by focusing on those little things and keeping the guests front of mind. And so I've done very well with that, but I never expected to be honored in this way by people that I consider to be the best in the industry. So it was an amazing honor. I could not believe it. And and having talked to you for this past 40 minutes or so, so well deserved. I'm in awe of of what you've done. What is next for Lost Together Stays? Is, is are you done or is this going to grow more? Nope. It is going to grow more. We have uh two markets that we're focusing on for 2023 and uh they will not, you know, it's it's all based on what makes sense for our family and in where we go in the communities that we serve. So we expect to have two more coming for 2023. That's fantastic to hear. Catherine, thank you so much for joining me. It's been an absolute, I mean, I, I loved meeting you in Miami and it's been a pleasure catching up and, and hearing more about Lost Together Stays and your philosophy behind it and the future ahead of you. So all good fortune going ahead. And, and thank you for sharing all this. And I'm sure it's, it's so motivational and inspiring. Thank you so much, Heather. Thank you so much, Catherine. That was truly 
inspirational. And I think for anybody thinking about getting into this business or really growing into the business and and making it something super, super special, then go back and listen to this again. Listen to Catherine again. Get in touch with Catherine. Ask her any questions that you have. I'm sure she would love to speak with you. So I'll be so interested in hearing how her business grows and hopefully we'll come back in a year or so and go back to her and see where Lost Together Stays has gone over that time. So do go to the show notes. There's there's quite a lot in there in terms of links for you to go see, go and check out her website. In particular, look at some of the reviews. Ask yourself, could I get reviews like this? I want to thank Will Slicker's and the Destination Air Awards for recognising Catherine and bringing her to the attention of the thousands of people that are going to download this episode, because I think it's so well deserved and so worthwhile for her to have this recognition. Okay, that's it for uh, another week of the podcast. I hope you enjoyed this one. Of course, if you would like to leave me a review, I would love it. You know, me, like everybody in this business, we like to see a five-star review. If you've got any comments or feedback for me, please let me know at heather at vacationrentalformula.com. And I want to say to anybody that has sent me an email that hasn't been responded to, please do so again, because I now have an assistant. Our assistant Tess is now in the background, checking out all my emails, making sure they get responded to, because with the influx of messages that were coming in, I was getting lost in it. And, you know, after 10 years, I've decided to get myself an assistant and and Tess is already doing a fantastic job. So, If you have emailed me, haven't had a response, I'm so sorry. You'll probably get a response now because she's going through my back catalogue of messages now and checking with me to make sure that I have responded. But anyway, I aim never to leave anybody unanswered in the future. Well, that's it for another week. Looking forward to being with you again next week. I've got a great interview coming up with my friend Andy Medic, where we're talking about properties we've stayed at in the last year and sharing some of our feedback on them. And I think you're going to find that really interesting. And then we're also talking to David Jacoby from Hostfully. You've already heard from him in this episode, but I'm talking to him about the Hostfully survey that is going to be published very shortly. And there's some really interesting results from that that will definitely be worth listening to. And... As we come up to the new year, I'm interviewing Andrew McConnell from Rented.com for our annual review of the year and look forward to 2023. And that's going to be super interesting as well. So stay tuned, keep listening, and I'll be with you again next week. Thanks for listening. And don't forget to check out Hostfully, our podcast sponsor. Head on over to the Virtual Vendor Showcase where you can find out more about this incredible company. And don't forget to use the promo code VRF100 to save $100. We look forward to you joining us on our next episode. It's been a pleasure as ever being with you. If there's anything you'd like to comment on, then join the conversation on the show notes for the episode at vacationrentalformula.com. We'd love to hear from you. And I look forward to being with you again next week.